Buongiorno tutto il mondo. Come stai? Now, I don't speak Italian, non parlo molto italiano. I don't know if that was correct, but what I was trying to say was good morning world. How are you doing? Right now I am in Rome, Italy. I'm here with the lovely Carrie Rad, my Hello. beautiful girlfriend. Ciao, buongiorno. Oh. So Marco and I just wrapped our shoot up in the Shetland Islands. He's headed over to the Basque Country to go on a foodie adventure. And I am here in Italy with Carrie. She's been here trying to figure out her Italian citizenship for the last couple of weeks, traveling around with her mom. So good. Yeah. It was so neat to come back here and see family. My family lives in Nola, which is southern Italy, and it was so cool to just reconnect with everybody. And I don't know, traveling with your mom in your 30s is fun, and we had a really good time. You're not 30 yet, though. You're 29. 29 but I'm just rounding up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a lot of time here in Rome. Unfortunately, we only have today because tomorrow we're gonna be renting a car and we're gonna be road tripping up through Tuscany, trying to hit all of the hot springs. There's a bunch of hot springs up there. And then we're gonna head up to Venice and try to catch the tail end of Carnival. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really mellow. Um, we're gonna keep these vlogs pretty straightforward, but we have some exploring to do. So let's go explore Rome. Coliseum, a couple of quick facts. I'm not gonna go in there. It's um, extremely crowded. It's one of the biggest tourist attractions in the world, but it was built by the emperors in the Flavian dynasty. So in the first century AD, um, the Colosseum was erected. It was built over Emperor Nero's kind of palace. You know, it's been like the blueprint for sports stadiums ever since. It's kind of the quintessential arena. It was used for lots of stuff, but probably most famously for gladiatorial battles. Lots of time against animals, but sometimes on special occasions, people first people. So if you have seen the movie Gladiator, if you, you kind of understand what it's all about. There's a saying, bread and circus is what keeps the people happy. You don't want to have revolts, you don't want to have revolution. You keep the population well-fed, you keep them entertained, and blood sport back then was the best way to do that. There's lots of hustlers in Rome. There's tons of pickpockets. Be aware, be alert. But everybody's speaking to us in Spanish. I don't know if I look español. Parece español. Bueno, no sé. Well, while it might not look like much today, this was the Circo Massimo, the Circus Maximus, the chariot racing arena where Ben-Hur would have been competing. If you've seen that movie, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's a classic. You should check it out. They believe that this arena could have held around 250,000 people. And what's even crazier is that it's been around since the 6th or 7th century BC. It was believed to have been built by the 5th king of Rome. There were supposedly seven kings of Rome. Before Rome became a republic, it was a monarchy, and after it was a republic, it was an empire. But there's just way too much history to take in here. Rome is basically a giant open-air museum. You gotta use your imagination. Maybe 2,000 years ago, 250,000 people were sitting here snacking on farro and uh, watching the chariot races. Just like a day at the Del Mar Fair. Easy.
that back there is Constantine's arch. Now, Constantine made the Roman Empire Christian, and that is kind of like what he went into the history books for. He's the first Christian emperor of Rome, and when Rome became Christianized, everything changed. Right now, this whole area that we're in is kind of the heart of ancient Rome. Uh, over there is the Forum. The Forum was where, uh, when new laws were made, somebody would go up to the Rostra uh, and announce it to the public. Um, but it's pretty cool, like just walking around here, even though it's super crowded, even though there's tons of tourists, um, it really does kind of take you back to letting you imagine what it would have been like. It's so crazy to look at the Colosseum and imagine what it was like. I don't know if I would want to be sitting there watching what happened. There was so much blood, but it's cool to imagine. So you would want to see it? Uh, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> Something that's very easy to overlook, but is super important. There's free public fountains all over the city. One of the most lasting elements of Roman culture uh, are the aqueducts. And the aqueducts are almost everywhere in the Roman world. There's still ruins of these amazing aqueducts, some of which that span hundreds of miles. They were built at a slope ever so slightly that the water would flow naturally from very far away into the city, feed the baths that the Roman elite would wash in, and the fountains that all of the regular people would drink from. And it's pretty crazy. They still have a lot of those fountains flowing, and the water tastes nice. I found a chill little plaza, nice and quiet, nobody here. It's a dude selling paninis and beers, so we got a panini and a paroni. It's like two in the afternoon, it's supposed to rain in about an hour, so we're gonna try to squeeze in as much as we can until then. So it's like three in the afternoon, which is very late to be eating lunch in Italy. Most of the restaurants close, but uh, we found this cute little spot called Divino Stilia Food and Wine. It's a little wine bar. It's totally packed right now, so we're eating at the bar, but we've ordered like a beef ragu pasta, caprese salad, two glasses of vino. Grazie. Well, that place was deliciosa, magnifico. Super, super good. But we're gonna do as the Italians do and uh, head back to the Airbnb right here and uh, have a little snoozy. This could be the world's smallest elevator. <laughs> How are we gonna fit your back? If you have here? claustrophobia, don't go in. No, I can't even turn around. I have a bag. <laughs> I guess I'll just close it with my backpack. Are we over the weight limit in here? <laughs> Maybe, okay, I just ate. It. Andiamo. Okay. Every key in Italy so far has looked like this, which I think is so cool because it feels so old school. This actually isn't the right key for that door. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to use it anyways. That's the one on the gate. 
did it. <laughs> Welcome to our little humble home. And nap time. That was a nice little nap. And? The first thing that I said when we laid down in bed was, I'm ready for my pasta. <laughs> but first, we are going to take this bottle of Prosecco to the Coliseum and uh, just sit while the sun sets. That was like a last minute choice and I'm glad we're doing it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was 24 hours in Rome. In all honesty, it was more like six hours running around Rome. But we did the most that we could in this day. I think we did, I think we did pretty good. I think we did a really good job. I you mean, can't do it in a day. You have to have more than one day in Rome. Totally. At least three. But like they said, Rome wasn't built in a day, and it sure as hell wasn't explored in one. <laughs> so uh, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe, turn on notifications, make sure you subscribe to Carrie's channel, and stay tuned because we're gonna be heading uh, tomorrow up to Tuscany for hot springs, hilltop villages, wine. So excited. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna finish this bottle of Prosecco, finish the sunset. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we will see you on the road. Peace. Ciao, buonanotte. Ciao.